Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the GBYWN Australia podcast. I am your host, as usual, Aston Crude, and here tonight I have a very special treat. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here talking to former ICWS hardcore champion, ICWS heavyweight champion. I am talking to, without a doubt, an influence on many of the guys from early WCWA. He is the revolutionary Clint Marshall. Thank you for having me. Thank pleasure, you for being here, bro. To be here. I'm, Excellent. I'm glad we finally got to organize this. Yeah, well, man, when when yeah. Justin messaged me on Facebook and said that you had actually brought up the idea of doing a yeah. podcast, I was like, really? Yeah. Fuck. Awesome. Yeah, because like, I mean, I mean, I've 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 been one of the guys. Um, I'm sure we'll touch on this, but like I've never been very proactive in the whole booking side and like the politics and like organizing things. Yeah, I've, always very, been, I've always been like you know sort of just you know where where. What am I doing? Where is it? All right, I'll see you then. You're very much at yeah. arm's length with things like you're you're a mysterious figure. I guess yeah. we know who you are. We've we talked to you at the shows and stuff, yeah. but you never really voice your opinion on certain yeah. things and all that. So I think it's going to be very interesting for those listening to hear your specific yeah, thoughts and everything you've done. I in think yarding. it's good. I think it's only fair as well because I mean, you know, I've been been here for so long, and you know, I, I feel like yeah, the guys should probably you know get to know me a bit more you yeah know, see my history and you know just how i feel about everything and and it's I'm exciting sure, i'm for sure me. To, i'm sure to allow them to you know have a better insight and improve relationships and yeah and it's like exciting that. for me man because yeah, i'm absolutely. like because i've known you now for fucking five years and i've never really got to know you yeah really, as far as the wrestling goes we'll talk you know we'll yeah. joke around at the shows but we never really got into the nitty-gritty of everything that absolutely, you've done yeah. um so first of all becoming a fan of wrestling how did that come about um I always sort of had a had a draw towards wrestling. I was always fascinated by it, seeing it on TV. I I recall very vaguely um, my family used to have with the Foxtel with the satellite TV. We used to have one of those illegal boxes that got the free main event and all of that. Just Mike. I just yeah. I just he remember um, switching through the channels. You know when That's I was so when funny. I was younger. <laughs> this is back when like I didn't even really know what wrestling was. Um, and I'm pretty sure I saw WrestleMania 20. I just remember the uh, layout with it was at Madison Square Garden, yeah. I believe. And, and everyone I, I kept slipping over on the fucking uh, yeah. the entrance ramp. You, yeah, you some, that? something like that. Anyway, I just I just remember that layout and seeing videos of it. Now I'm like, shit, you know, that rings a bell in my memory and stuff. And so I think I saw that. So that's like sort of my earliest memory of it. WrestleMania 20. WrestleMania shit, 20. Shit, mine's like WrestleMania 15. Yeah, at like that time that was pretty. I, th- I think I, I could just be playing tricks myself um another person who was really influential well not influential but sort of introduced me to the concept was actually zach zach fleischer of phaser really yeah he's all actually, those years ago all those years ago oh, he was really? always one of, yeah he always had those um because <laughs> our even jd flanders and yeah because our our <laughs> I didn't know you had a relationship with him no because our mums our our mums was sort of not friends but you know they we interacted and i actually ended up at zach's house a couple times when i was younger i remember and he always used to have his his toys and stuff and his figurines like um like mario kart and like donkey kong like those little go-karts and then you were have. like shit then, rangers then he, are cool too yeah no. <laughs> and then no and then he also had all the wrestling figures like oh Stone really cold and the rock so shit, like, that's i didn't know he was that big of a fan yeah um, oh look i, I, I yeah I i'm pretty sure this <laughs> and this you brought him that, in but um <laughs> yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I recall it. So yeah, he was he he was someone who um, uh, you know, sort of introduced me to sort of like the concept, and then you had WrestleMania 20, which was the first time I think I saw it on TV, um, and then and then from there, just you know, getting Foxtel and actually like getting into it and watching it, um, you know, SmackDown, Raw, all of that. Um, I remember I used to. This was back when there were no DVRs, so I used to actually be there with the videotape. You know, have oh, it set. Too, you know, I had to wake up in the morning, change the Foxtel channel. You know, one oh eight. You know, <laughs> make sure it's all set. You know, three thirty to five thirty, record it. So it was, you know, tough times, but I was committed and I loved watching it. Um, oh, oh, VHS. I also remember with um with with yeah with uh, with a uh, Barrett. We used to watch um, we had the uh, oh, I forget what it was called. It was on, it was on um the community channel that was on Foxtel. I forget what it was called. Um, but like, you know, that sort of like... Access 31? No, 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 no. Access that's not, th- that's not nah, Foxtel. No, not on Foxtel. There was was that the one that, that, had, that did the Australian wrestling? Yeah, it was AWF or something like that. Like Australian wrestling. Oh, I, I, I got no idea. Like I don't know. 
Oh, Aurora, oh, that's okay. the one. Yeah, Aurora yeah, used to do like uh, just a half hour thing every Saturday, and I remember always used to go wow. to Barrett's place. I didn't know and, that. and like, uh, Barrett wasn't really that into it at the time, and I always used to say, oh, let's put it on, let's watch it, and stuff. And so we'd watch it, and then sometimes, you know, and eventually sort of just grew on both of us, and, you know, from there it just progressed. And like like Justin mentioned in his podcast, we went to the tours, and yeah. we always did the. Next the, to the fat guy. Or yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, always did the trampoline wrestling, and, you know, always, you know, sort of just grew from there. Cool. Uh, there's one thing that I forgot to mention in Justin's um, was that there was a fourth guy in the WWE TNA Finishes mm. series. Uh, yeah. You, Barrett. Justin and what was his name? Jake. Jake. Jake, Jake Goldman. Unfortunately, yeah. he's not with us anymore. No, um, but memories of um, you know, like him? those times with him. You know? um, and what? Why was that fourth guy never brought into um, um, ICWS? Jake, or T, was he in TWA? Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess. Um, Jake had a lot of stuff going on at home, um, which I don't need to disclose. But um, no. So he, he, so he, he, he was always sort of you know. I, I guess he had a lot of stuff going on, so he could never really commit to it, and he was never really involved. But he he loved being there with us, and I mean, for a kid who had a lot of trouble in school with like turning up and attendance and getting in trouble, and he came into this group with us. He was also a big wrestling fan to start yeah. with, so he came into this group and to see this group of guys who were just like so open um, and accepting, and just you know shared this common interest, and who were just yeah, happy to of, like be one, with. One them. of the big factors as well, just like socially, just at the school we all went to, because we all went to the same primary school, was that it was tiny. So there was one main group of the popular people, and then there was the off-cut group of like the like, the other people that just didn't fit in, and we were in the off-cut group of the other people that okay, didn't fit in. So yep, we were yep. always the much friendlier, the, yeah, more yeah. open, you know, people. To yeah, new yeah. People. But um. Yeah, so, I mean, he had a lot of stuff going on. That's why he was never really in, involved. I don't think he was ever that really serious about the trampoline wrestling, but he, he was in the videos, and he, he loved doing it and just messing around and just spending time with us and watching the paper. And when, he was, yeah. when, when, I watch, when I watch him wrestle, when I think back to how he wrestles, very similar to Luke Monet. Very similar, just got that just got that edge in terms of executing the moves and selling the moves. You well, you, you made it clear to me last week at my house, uh, he was the best one out of you, out of you four. I don't know if he was the, the best one, but Didn't you I thought you said like he was definitely the best or something. Oh, like he that. was definitely like, I don't know, I definitely just saw him as like, he, was, he had so much like, just like that charisma, like he, his rock, The Rock was the, his favourite yeah. wrestler. Okay. And um, so he'd do The Rock bottom and he'd be exactly like The Rock doing He it. also wasn't scared. I remember we did the, we wanted to do the um, slice bread number two and he's just like, all right, I'll do it. Like straight up, it's like, oh, hold on, you're just going to do this backflip on the ladder? He's like, yeah. He's just like, he's just like, yeah, just lift me. Just make, make sure you flip me over. And I'm like, all right. And so we literally just went and, you know, in the finisher videos, if you go watch them, like, those takes there are probably you know I think first take we just put it in and you know that's so you know he 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 was he he was he was sort of reckless in the sense where he just wasn't afraid you know he had no fear um you know which was really good you know you just had a guy who was there you know happy Very to take it. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah absolutely but um yeah no he's um he he was a he was a good kid who unfortunately had a lot of things not go his way in life and um tragically passed away um but he he was a great kid um and i have very fond memories he was my best friend i think in year six and seven um yeah well, i'm he, sorry he, to hear he, he was a great he, he he was a good guy who 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 meant the best but came across sometimes not in the right way and yeah well, i'm sorry to hear yeah um and i mean his disinvolvement with the whole thing really just came down to the fact that i think he just his life circumstance was just spiraling out of control, and when you're backyard wrestling, that's the first thing that goes. Yeah, you know, without a doubt. Problems, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, that's so. the last thing that's going to be on your mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we'll move on <coughs> to uh, TWS Skyfall, as we yeah. mentioned last time. Uh, your memories of of uh, my that. memories. Um, every weekend, Friday. No, in, if, yeah, every weekend, Friday afternoon, straight after school, Saturday. Arvo, Sunday, just every day, just on the trampolines, wrestling. I already had this um, uh, small square trampoline, um, which was great. 
it was awesome. And as we got more passionate and more involved and like more serious, you know, I, 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 I play bass guitar, so I have a bass amp at home. So I always used to like bring my computer out and like hook it up to the speaker. So we had like really loud music and, oh, okay, cool. you know, we do our interests and pretend to be people. I remember, um, we used to, at being at the small school, we used to, um, have like quite, uh, close relationships with the teachers like they they weren't just like a teacher they were almost sort of your friend and stuff so we always used to put on matches like make wrestling characters based on our teachers at school oh, and, yeah, that's right. and like <laughs> I, I couldn't even tell you what we used to come up with but like we just used to like like retarded characters based on our teachers at school um the only person that will appreciate this button is Barrett, but yeah. Mr. Henderson and yeah. Reich. Yeah. So <laughs> we had this um, black teacher at our school, and obviously, yeah. you know, the Heidenreich thing goes like, Heiden, Heidenreich. Yeah. yeah. We changed the lyrics to, I am, I am black, I am, <laughs> I am black. <laughs> so, which was, you know, just one of those really immature things that we yeah. did, but it was great fun. Um, Barrett. Barrett talked about this in his podcast, but, you know, eventually we upgraded to the bigger trampoline and, you know, oh, we all chipped okay. in our money. Um, oh, cool. And it lived in my house. And so, you know, that was just all we did, really. We, you know, we used to come wrestle, wrestle on trampoline during the day, go to Justin's for a pizza night. You know, it was just the three of us, again, like Jake, sometimes would come along as well. But, you know, it was, just, you know, that's how old we were. We were only, what, 12, 13 at the time. Yeah. yeah. One memory. It's almost, it's almost like you, you, you three are always synonymous with each other's time and back yeah. to wrestling. Well, you always, we, yeah. the, the, during the timeline of your careers, you always seem to come back to each other at yeah. some point. Yeah, it's very weird how that happens. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, so Mike Delcano's joined ICWS. Yep, JD Flames joined ICWS. You're the last holdout. Yeah. Um, when did you first hear of ICWS, and why did it take you so long to well, get involved? Well, I think I was the one who actually discovered yeah, ICWS. I really? Was the, I was the one who just typed in like Perth Backyard Wrestling, or I think because of the YouTube geotagging and like recommended videos and stuff, it just popped up in. So it's a shame that you didn't see XCW pop up. Yeah. Because we would have had just definitely. Like, <laughs> we we're, were yeah. tramp. We were trampolinas back in the yeah. day. Yeah. That would have intimidated us so much. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah. um, yeah, I'm the one who discovered it, and I, like I said, I was the one who was messaging Dan, telling him, like, "Oh, come wrestle for us," because we had the idea with you know TWA to expand and blah 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 blah. Um, and then, you know, Barrett went, Justin went, um, and I sort of held off. I think I, uh, a large reason I held off for a long time as well is I, I used to play um, uh, uh, baseball on a Saturday, um, Saturday morning or afternoons and stuff, which is when the, ICW, the ICWS events were usually run. And who was your coach? Uh, that was uh, Dark Ice's <laughs> dad. I did not... I, that's a funny story. You mentioned that while we're on that because... Um, I was I was down at a training I was and um, Luke's Luke's uh, dad was coaching us I had no idea at the time and then there's Luke and I didn't even recognize him oh, at first really? he's like hey man and I'm like oh holy shit you know this you know the wrangler with the mullet and stuff and yeah I'm like, oh fuck it's Luke and you know hey how are you going and he's like yeah man I play baseball I'm like oh small world they said know? in this podcast like your debut show he was like there and he's like oh shit like he was in the baseball team yeah yeah yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, that's just a funny side note. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that um, that commitment clashed um quite often, and I think eventually, like I said, like you know, I had my pride, and I said I don't want to come here, and you know, yeah. I don't want to do it, or like I've got better things to do, or like you know, my time and stuff. And then I just saw the JD and 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 Delgado were just having fun. And it looked like a cool thing, like a cool atmosphere. So I was just like, yeah, whatever, I'll come check it so out. So you wanted to be involved? Yeah. Why not? You know, they, they were going to it, the two of us. And it was always the three of us. So it's like two of them are going to this thing. It's wrestling. I like wrestling. Like, why the hell am I well, not? yeah, you might you know, as well. What, what am I holding my pride for? Like a backyard, you know, for a trampoline? For a fed that's not actually happening anymore. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I just... Really exist in the first yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I just said... Um, you know, so your debut match is against Justin. Yep. Uh, and... Um, yeah, actually, I want to take this time to thank you guys for actually being willing to just be the fall guys for XCW's invasion, and that's one of my favourite segments in ICWS is the f proper invasion that we did. From my memory, I think it worked out quite well because I think we couldn't decide who would win. Yeah. So to have a dirty ending like that, where you guys all just interfered, sorted out that problem. Like, yeah. It just worked out. And with Peter JD Flame as yeah. well at the time. Yeah. It worked out well as well. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, so your memories on that debut match, were you nervous going into it? Um, not 
really. I was more anxious. You know, I was keen, like, oh, yeah, what's the deal? Let's get on the base. Let's have some fun. You know, throwing Justin around, it was just like, you know, oh, well, we're just going to do what we do on the trampoline, but on the base. And I think that's just what we did on was the Was it day. easy to adjust from the trampoline to the base? Um, yeah, I, I guess the only difference was, you know, the impact and not having that bounce. Pop, so, bounce, you know, yeah. so it, you relied a lot more on your strength. And obviously it was a bit more tough rather than just hitting this trampoline and there being like no impact yeah actually feeling a force and yeah um but other than that i think you know getting into it i just went straight into it. I, I was always one of those guys who i'm just like if it's not it was never really that big a deal i mean it's essentially just a group of dudes imitating yeah what they see on tv yeah. and you boil it down yeah so i was also like oh let's just go out there and do it if i screw up or i stuff up i'm not getting paid I haven't lost any... You know, there's no loss. Like, the worst thing that happened is someone's like, oh, he screwed up a move. Big deal. Yeah. Get on with your life. You know, yeah. it's, I'm wrestling on some tyres and some mattresses. Yeah. You know, what do you want from me? So <laughs> I, I just went out there and, you know, I didn't, I didn't really get to showcase much of what I could do until that diffuser match, which I'm sure we'll get into. But, yes. um, yeah, so I always just, you know, went out there, did my basic moves, you know, chaining, that, that sort of stuff. And I just, I, I, you know, sort of did whatever came to mind. I think back in those days I used to write down a couple spots and stuff and the rest of the time just like fill it in with whatever yep um, so your second match is against former ICW's champion Wicked Nick James in one of his last matches in ICWS yeah. um, what's it like wrestling someone you don't really know um, yeah so like I said the first time yeah wrestling one of those guys who we had no idea you know what their moveset was or what their deal was you know how they wrestled were they scared of anything um Nick was pretty chilled. He's sort of like, oh, yeah, I, I forget what his signatures were. He just came up to me a couple of minutes because I didn't plan anything before. I was just like, he's just like, oh, yeah, my signature's this and this. My finish is this. I'll probably do this and this and stuff like that during the match. And I'm like, okay, well, this is my thing. So we'll do that. And so it's, that's how we planned the match. Yeah. And you, you can see that in the match because I think it went for like five minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, I forget how it finished. It might, I might have hit the supernova. I can't even I, remember. I can't even remember. Um yeah yeah um, <laughs> yeah uh i think it hit the supernova the the one memory i have of that match it was, we had no cell nick james so I, I've, I've hit the finish or whatever it was i've got the one two three for the win i win while my hand's getting raised nick just gets up off the base and walks straight to the back you <laughs> that's know pretty I mean? much that pretty much defines <laughs> you know, that era of his career you he know just, what i mean he'd lost like, all, all he came in it was a singlet and shorts and his only ring attire was to pull on the knee pads yeah. <laughs> you know yeah um, but yeah, that that was cool wrestling. You know, someone other than Barrett or Justin for the yeah. first time. Um, so I'm guessing you don't have the reservations like a Jetty Flame had wrestling someone you don't know very well. Not at all. Um, I mean, I I played footy. I'd played contact sports, so you know, I wasn't too apprehensive with you know actually getting slammed and physical contact. And, okay. And that sort of stuff. Um, being a bigger guy than JD at the time, or it just naturally. Um, I wasn't too scared, you know, so I didn't have those reservations. And yeah. um, So the next show is your third match, yep. and you wrestled Diffuser at Halloween Hell. That was... This is your third match. Yeah. And um, you're, probably, you're probably not even really aware of, of, of who Diffuser is. Not that at well. all. I mean, did you know much about XCW at not this point? At I, I had So no the next I... thing you know, oh, you're wrestling this guy, Diffuser. Yeah, I'm wrestling this six-foot-tall guy. <laughs> it's like, you know, they, they build us as, like, the big guys of the federation and I'm like what was I I was like five foot nine <laughs> five foot nine this guy's six foot two something yeah. like that you know so we're, we're like do the stare off and he's at least a head taller yeah. than me and I'm just like what have I gotten myself into <laughs> yeah. I, I know I know before the match he actually took you out the front yeah no we actually so how was the planning process um so obviously we had a talk before the uh the fight um but he had these cool ideas and stuff, and you'll see if you watch the match, we had the thing where he gets me up on the shoulders, and then I do the Spin flip around, around the into the Hurricane yeah. Rana, which, by the way, I'd never hit a Hurricane Rana in my life, um, which was pretty intimidating when you actually finally get on this guy's shoulders, you're there eight feet in the air, and it's like, all right, just spin around now and flip back backwards, and it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> you actually get up there, and it's like... Well, I've come this far, <laughs> you know, may as well commit. 
Um, and I loved after that when he when he came to the outside and he was pissed off and he ran back at you and you just him threw him the straight ladder. to the ladder. And it was I thought like, I'd actually hurt oh. him there, but um, no, he, he's a big guy. He took it well. Yeah, um, I, I just thought it was really. I cool remember when it. we were planning. He's like because uh, he goes, oh, you reckon you could hit a suplex on me? And I'm always a guy. Like, I have faith in my abilities. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. I'll try. And he's like, hit, try hit the stalling suplex. So we're actually oh. out the front, like practicing the oh, stalling really? suplex, but with you know, with just letting him back down, yeah. which is. Pretty risky, I mean, because we're just doing it on grass. On All grass, it takes yeah. is, like, one little over-rotation. And well, like, we wrestled got... for ten years on grass. Yeah, so, so I'm sure he wasn't too fast. <laughs> he, was, he would have been fine with but, it. But um, that match was awesome. I really surprised myself with that match. I think it was great because we, I had Diffuser, who was a guy bigger than me, who could take the stuff, you know, who could actually lift me up and was, was felt safe because, you know, even if this guy, this guy screws it up, there's not going to be much impact. I f- didn't feel like he had... Um, he, he wasn't afraid... And I wasn't. I felt pretty secure as well, knowing I had this bigger guy there to you know back me up in yeah. any situation. And and yeah, like you said, and I, I think I, I I was welcomed with open arms into the ICWS. Um, you know, from the start. I mean, I've never really taken the whole wrestling thing seriously. For me, it was just a bit of fun. Um, a lot of guys in the fair, like you know, they wear their heart on the sleeve. Like you know, this is my character. I love this. This is what I do. For me, it was just like, yeah, rock up. You know, at the end of the day, the best thing that's going to happen for me is I get this piece of cardboard around my yeah. waist. Like that was my attitude to it all. But they welcomed me in with open arms, and in this match, you know, they've got this big six foot guy, and you know, I'm holding him for the stalling suplexes and getting him on my shoulders and. You know, all of that, and so it really impressed these guys and stuff, and in in my third match, and, you know, straight after the match, they're like, I remember, they're like, oh, yeah, I think we'll probably put you in the title picture now, and I'm like, oh... So you feel like that match really brought you to the dance? Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, I didn't expect to be like, all right, I think we're going to put you in, like, you know, a title feud now. And it was just like, oh... That's how they were, man. Like, as soon as someone impressed them enough... Yeah. That's it. That's their guy. Like before, I, I rocked up. Bundaberg was supposed to be the next guy to be the heavyweight champion. Yeah. He he bailed on ICWS. I have one match with Dan Zepp, and they're like, next show we're putting the belt on you. Yeah. So it's like as soon as you do one thing. Yeah, and I, I think they with, make the decision. And okay, I think this with is that, the next guy. I think with that match because you know I take in the the huge chokes, two choke slams, yeah. and the emerald fusion off, off the, the ladder. ladder. Oh and man, so flush. Yeah, so flush. So everyone was just you know their reactions were legitimate. It's like holy shit, they've actually. Done and that's that, your third yeah. match, and it's voted yeah. match of the year. Yeah, and so like that—that <laughs> that was cool because I mean, all of these things I never put in. Like, I didn't honestly put in that much thought or effort into them. They were just something I, had, I did on it a Saturday happened, afternoon, yeah. and it was—it was cool to see that these guys like really enjoyed watching me, and like they found what I did properly entertaining, and you know, it's somewhat encouraging. Cool. Mm. All right. Well. Um, I will say Diffuser in his interview spoke very highly of you and um, he was asked in the Q&A five people he wants to wrestle if he could come back and wrestle, but he won't. Mm. But um, he, met- he mentioned to have a rematch with you. Um, he would love to wrestle you again if That'd he had cool. the chance, but um, that would be amazing, you know, fucking five years after it happened, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, he spoke very highly of you, so there's this respect between you yeah. and Diffuser, even though you probably haven't and even I, I, spoke to him since the day you wrestled. Yeah, and I remember after the match, you know, he's hit the move and stuff, you can, you can actually see in the pinfall, he like does the move and he just goes to me and he goes, good match, man. Oh. Straight up in my ear, and I'm like, you know, cool. Like, this guy's <laughs> been doing it for God knows how many years, and he's, you know, I've come up against him and, and lost, and he's like, you know, good work. I was like, Ah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it must have felt pretty cool. Um, all right, so from there, um, I just want to ask you about working with Kilowatt Chaos. Um, um, there are a few battles between you guys um, at this stage. He's crazy. He's you, crazy. You've wrestled him a lot of times. I have I know in WWE, a- I've booked you against him a few times yeah. too. Um, yeah, Chaos and I have come up against each other quite a few times. Um, yeah. I, I remember wrestling chaos and like yeah again like our um our hold our sort of perspective just can Justin can vouch for this as well our perspective on the um Luke and Joss was like holy crap these guys aren't even eighteen or like you know what I mean yeah. look how big they are yeah. they're massive <laughs> you know what I mean I used to, I used to buy us beer when we yeah. were uh, <laughs> underage he was still underage as well oh really <laughs> <laughs> huge beer, like, I just, yeah like my one memory of him he's such a nice guy just um like 
he, he'd come out from wherever the hell he lived to like where we lived to like buy us beer yeah. which was awesome which right. was yeah it was sick but um yeah so those guys were sort of because maybe you know these guys are you know, huge and crazy and stuff and so it's like oh yeah you're wrestling a match against him it's like oh shit you know but um I don't really have too good a memory of the match I just know it was fun I think I won I think you, you tried to do the supernova but you couldn't do it yeah he was heavy back then yeah I think what it ended up happening just sort of turned into like sort of like this like body just slam pump handle pump handle and, yeah, body yeah. sideward slam yeah. and stuff and I think I tr- I think I tried. I twi- I tried twice. I was I was like I tried to hit it, hit the body slam, and I'm like, nah, that's not good enough. So I tried to get him up again, just no luck. And sounds that- like me trying to give Blade Shaw the fucking fall away slam. <laughs> I tried three times. I didn't know why I didn't quit after the first time. Um, soon after this, you win the Hardcore Championship in a three away with JD Flame and Mike Del Cano. I did touch on this with JD Flame yeah. earlier, but awesome match. you get to wrestle your your old buddies. Your this old was this was fun from from just what I remember. We it was the first time I had main evented a show. Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool that um I think for the first time in a while the the um, heavyweight championship wasn't the main event. Oh, okay. Uh, I think that was the case. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was just fun to just get with your old guys, throw them through tables, free for all, you know, throw them into the shed and stuff. One thing I will touch on is um, Barrett, when he locked in the clover leaf on the outside, um, he really locked it in. Like, he was, he was bending in my lower back. I was in serious pain, and you can hear it on the, in the footage. It's like, oh, let it off, let it off, you know what I mean? So I'm like, you know, dude, stop, this hurts. <laughs> but um, that... That match was fun. Um, again, I thought it was just cool that, like, you know, I think it was, what, my fifth match there? And yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're... the belt now. <laughs> you're, here's the belt. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I, I never thought much of it. Like, my entire attitude throughout all of wrestling is I don't care whether I win or lose or if I have the championship or not because at the end of the day, what's the championship? It's this fault, you know, pseudo... You see, I don't su- know why, but I got the... I don't know why, but I always thought... And I'll talk, probably talk about this in the WWA section where I was like, oh... I'm worried about telling Zibby he's losing this match. I don't know why I always thought that. Yeah. I'm worried about telling him he's losing. Nah, not at I all. I don't know why. <laughs> I've, like, I just, like, I think I was saying with you and Barrett, like, I always worry about telling you guys you're losing. I, I mean, how why. can you get upset about losing a match in something that's predetermined? It's like... Yeah, right, listen to that, you fuckers, that yeah. whinge about fucking losing. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's like taking pride in winning the match that was predetermined mm. you know like it's a show you're there to entertain people yeah, yeah I, always... I won a fake fight right? yeah <laughs> it's yeah I don't know that was my attitude I never cared whether I win or lost whether I got the title or not I was just happy to go there and you know put no on fun. a show and you know hang with the guys so that, that was that was me but yeah that that hardcore match was fun um that yeah, I, I you know we just got half an hour to just showcase, and at the time our I you know that was sort of peak interest in wrestling. I think that was still year ten at the time, so before things at school got very gotcha. hectic. So, um, you know my my wrestling imagination is running wild. Yeah. Um, so you know that match just idea pops into your head. Fuck it, let's do it. You know what I mean? And Barrett, Justin, and I would get together the weekend before, and we just brainstorm this giant list of spots, and we just keep it under the ring there so like whenever someone wasn't involved in the in the in the match they go look at the spots it's like oh right, let's hit this spot you know so we just had sort of this well I never list. knew you guys are that sneaky putting a fucking yeah. list oh, yeah, of spots well when you've only got one camera ring. in yeah. our defense that wasn't our idea we definitely got that idea from someone else that did it yeah who was it oh it wasn't our idea. It wasn't it was our. Like, it was not our idea. But um, I forget who it was. One of the RSWS boys used to do it. Okay. okay. No, I'm not sure. I never. I never encountered anyone that needed it. Well, I had a list of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just get the ref to get it on the smartphone. <laughs> so you have a run as hardcore champion. I think you defended it twice before we got to our twisted metal I five. I, I, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember against which who against. Um, I just know that you defended yeah. it two times. Um, but you know, being hardcore champion, do do you don't? I guess you maybe don't recall too much from it. Nah, <laughs> no, not not too much. Um, like I said, I you know it was just my character. Like when I when I didn't when I wasn't there, I wasn't Clint Marshall. I wasn't yeah. hardcore champion. Like that was just my character. Like someone who puts on a costume before doing a play. Like yeah. once you, once I left the arena, like. 
back to my normal <laughs> life sort of thing. Fair know. enough. The, the title was just a prop. But, um, you know, it was fun, you know, defending it. I think we did a couple hardcore... I was never a big fan of hardcore wrestling. I'm, I'm still not. I was always very apprehensive because you have a lot of guys there who just, like, put their body on the line. They love the pain and, and not... And, like, full props, mad respect for yeah, those good guys. Yeah, good on them. Um, but I... Um, I didn't want to put my body in that sort of harm. Still playing sport and stuff, you didn't want to like come here, injure yourself here for no reason, which will impact things in your life which you're actually yeah. like, which actually so, oh, I don't want to say ma- you know, which actually are important, yeah, which matter, yeah. like where there are consequences yeah. if you can't commit to them. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so that's why I was always very apprehensive to the hardcore wrestling. But you know, I still take a table spot. I still take a chair shot. You know. Yeah. But once you step it up to like, oh, thumbtacks and light tubes, it's like, uh, you know, yeah. let's take a step back. Okay. Um, so, Twisted Metal 5, you defeat Dan Zeppelin in the main event for the Heavyweight Championship. Uh, how did it make you feel? Um, did you feel, did you ever, did you just at least think for a moment, wow, I accomplished this within not even a year. Like, I've become like I said, champion. I, I, I've got both titles. Yeah, I was <laughs> just sort of thrown into it. I, was, I put on that match with Diffuser given the hardcore title and then they're like alright we really like you do you feel man. like you're not even really trying yeah, to get that spot I've but f- you're being handed it yeah I, um, I, you're I would, the next guy I here's feel, the road you're here yeah now. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say I feel guilty but uh, I'd say that it was sort of just like oh okay like you're giving me the title like thanks you know like again I didn't really think anything of the title I mean Hell, I, I don't even think after I won the title I was that committed to the Fed. Like, I was never... I don't know, I, uh, maybe they were hoping, like, by giving me the title, I'd, like, really... It would pique my interest and I'd get really passionate about it. Because, like, even in ICWS, I really was not that involved in the booking and and the politics and the arguments. That's probably why stuff. I always felt like I never got to know you. Yeah. Because, like, you're probably, never involved in anything yeah. like that. Um, and that's just because I had a lot of other things, like Justin, you know, I, I was playing my sport, I was I was heavily involved in my academics at school. Um, uh, I was, we were, Justin and I were in a band together, which was very... Which, and Zach as well. And Zach, Zach as well. Okay. Um, I mean, he wasn't in the picture at this time, backyard mm-hmm. wrestling-wise, but... You know, so I had a lot of other things on my plate at the time, which again was sort of higher priority, okay. which is why I'd never really got myself involved in this. But you know, I came in and they're like, "Oh, you know, we're giving you the title." It's like, "Oh, cool, thanks, guys." But even after the shows, like you know, it'd be times where like those other commitments where we'd have to have the main event as like the third match of the no, day okay. because yeah. that's you know, my baseball game's at two thirty, guys. Sorry, like, yeah, I've, I've got to do that. You know, I can't come from my game in Williton back to Morley and stuff yeah. at the end of the day it's like I've got to do it in the morning and then I've got to leave I'm really sorry but that's that's the way that's it is how it, that's just how it is sometimes but, um, that match with Dan was awesome we pulled off some really I'm pretty sure that was right. match of the year yeah I think that I think was two years in a row you got yeah. match of the year is that the yeah. one where you killed him with the yeah that was the one at the end <laughs> where there's that gruesome supernova just where he sort of slipped my grip right at the end and doesn't quite tuck his neck and he sort of he sort of lands on his shoulder it wasn't too bad i think he had a sore neck afterwards nothing got broken but you see me like in the video like i hit it and i'm like oh shit i've killed him (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean rather than going straight into the pin i've hit it and i've just been like oh fuck i've done it i've done it you know what i mean (laughs) at least you didn't hit it on a marble floor yeah Um. or did i (laughs) uh the the first match after that is a three-way for both the hardcore and the heavyweight championship yeah. in, uh, I think it's, uh, I guess a two falls match. First fall for the hardcore, yeah. Second for the heavyweight. Chaos wins the hardcore title off you. Good, Thank that was for good. That. Um, but yeah. the tombstone onto the folded out chair on Zeppelin is a huge memory for me. Oh, where I jump up. Where you jump up onto the folded out oh, chair. Oh, that's right. I remember that. And everyone was like, oh. Fuck! Never seen anything like that before. And it was really clean as well. Yeah, I mean, like Dan, he didn't get Dan, hurt. Was, Dan was a much shorter guy than me, so his head was nowhere near the impact zone. But just like seeing that chair going from straight to going like yeah. that and making that huge cracking noise, mm. and it just looked that looked sick. Yeah, that was really uh, fucking um, memorable. Yeah, I was glad they took the hardcore title off me. I, I don't think it was fair for me to parade around with, with both, both belts. Yeah. You know, hey, look at me, I have both belts, and you guys have. I think it was always nothing. a given. Like once you got both belts, the hardcore was 
going to be the first yeah, to go. Yeah, but I think it was the novelty of ICW, ICWS being able to say, like, at one point we had that undisputed yeah. champion. Well, I think they it's like the Hogan Ultimate Warrior match yeah. at WrestleMania. Well, I think they unified it because the Fed was actually getting much smaller. I think the Fed was... Um, at that point in time, there was a lot of people going to pro training, a lot of people... Dropping, yeah, dropping I was out. gone... You were gone, mm. DJ was gone, Eli, Eli was, was gone, gone. Nick and I James think they, was gone. They decided that we didn't need two titles, we were just going to have the one. And then they realised, oh, people are coming back. We've got Tim Justice and Low yeah. Rider now, we've got all these guys now. Oh shit, yeah. let's bring it back. Um, all right. One thing I want to bring up is something that I don't know if anyone has really taken notice of it, but I have. The Clint Marshall notepad. You've always got a fucking notepad, you've always got a list of spots. You've always pre-written things. You're yeah. always writing things down. I want to know how a clip martial match is planned out. How you do that? Why? You know? Do you sit at home with your notepad and you write down ideas? I, I, I actually. This says. Do you have totally, not, I have very little recollection. Really? I, um, you always I, had a notepad. It I wasn't know, just a sheet I, of paper. Know, there was a notepad. I know. I did. I know. I did. And I'm glad you've reminded me. But I literally don't even have much of a, a recollection of of. Of the notepad, the infamous notepad. Yeah, well, um, for me, it's infamous. Like, I don't know. I was like, I, what's in that? I want to read no, that. No, there was absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> dear diary. Dear, dear diary. diary. Today Barrett I broke... was a cunt again. <laughs> <laughs> Today I broke Dan Zeppelin's neck. It was all... <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> um, no, I think just for me, it was just... Because, like I said, I didn't plan many of my matches before, not even over Facebook and stuff. It would sort of just rock up there on the day. So I just used to, like, all right, cool, what are we going to do? Let's start with this. Bam, bam. I'd write it down. Um, and then I'd just hand it, uh, you know, once I've written down the spots, I'd study it, I'd do my thing, and then I'd just hand it over to... Um, the opponent. The opponent. They'd have a study of it. You know, we do the match. Rip out a sheet of paper in the bin, you know. Because when we wrestled, I was very disappointed that you didn't hand me the notepad. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, where's the notepad for my match? You know, it's got the notepad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anyone really cared. It was just like something I Well, I, I always noticed it and I always thought, wow, I can't wait to wrestle him because he must have some different way about doing things I want to learn about this oh no literally it was just like let's listen great shit. what a letdown I thought it was <laughs> sorry this, Carl I thought this was going to be this golden diary the, the gospel of yeah. Marshall <laughs> how he became so good now I'll know oh, no. he <laughs> doesn't book, even know the Marshall book of secrets <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh, um, okay so one of your first title defences after that three way was against Knuckles yep so I want to know your thoughts on working with Knuckles, who's a very unorthodox wrestler, and trying to get the best out of him. Um, I know Knuckles was one of those guys who was um, very um, uh, what's uh, spontaneous. Like remember that I remember there was that one match where they're like, "Save him, Knuckles!" Like Knuckles wasn't even involved. I, in kept, the I kept yelling, "Where's Knuckles? Knuckles? Where's Knuckles?" And Knuckles was just and on his just... phone, and, and then he just gets up and like, "Oh fuck it!" So he, he doesn't run in someone. and he spears everyone, which is not part of the <laughs> angle it wasn't at all. Part of it at but all. You, so you know, I mean, that was my impression of the guy, where he, you know, he's just this guy who sort of like, you know, spontaneously does what he wants. Um, but you know, we planned out a pretty solid match. I think the ending of the match was he he gets me in the knuckles lock. Um, I'm fighting out of it. And eventually, I saw he like jumps on my back. You, you and I get just, up, I just pull him over, over and hit the supernova. Very cool. And that was cool. cool. I think I think we just had uh, a pretty solid match. Um, he didn't go too off script. I think we had it pretty well planned out on the day. Because um, I think if you don't have a good match with Knuckles, it's going to be a bad match. Yeah. But if you have a good match with Knuckles, yeah. it's a very good match. Yeah. You, Del Cano, me and Ice, from memory, those four had great matches with him. Jack Wallace, on the other hand, did not have a good match with Knuckles. Terrible. Yeah. But it was good to see Knuckles back in the main event scene. Yeah. He was the first ever champion back in yeah. 2007 or whenever it was. Um, I mean, still at this time, I still had no real character towards me. Are you... Um, you guys gave me the unofficial title of like the sheriff only because my entrance music was you know, yeah and, when, I me- when- and I remember some fag in the crowd go he's the sheriff in these parts yeah like, oh. <laughs> well then people also called you the bounty hunter yeah the bounty hunter I don't know I just got this like you know um, so it wasn't wild, something that you thought of it was just it was just organically uh, someone yeah, said I mean it. my original name was going to be um, when I wanted to come into the ICWS was going to be Clint Inferno which um, 
which would fit in with the supernova thing, you know, inferno, explosion, flames. And then wasn't it also going to be scorching Clint Marshall? Yeah, something like that. And, we, and 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 they they voted against that name because we already had JD Flame. You know, they didn't want another flame sort of like. Plus, fire. I think I also mentioned, even though that no one cared. Oh, there was a guy in XCW called Scorcher. Yeah. Um, just so you know. <laughs> but um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Like, no, like no, anyone no, would give a fuck about yeah. that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was sort of my I, unofficial... Nothing to do with gimmick. flames or fire. Yeah, nothing. Too many flames. <laughs> but um, yeah, they didn't... Oh, yeah, they um, <laughs> that was sort of my unofficial game. I didn't really have much of a persona to me. Like, my persona was just like fucking big, the big guy of the Fed, even though I wasn't that big <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't. I, I don't. I, re- I don't think I ever really cut promos. Um, I think Barrett mentioned his podcast. Like he said, like, oh, we need to take the title off Marshall because it's not going. I will anywhere. mention that. Don't don't talk too much about that. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's just move on then. All then. right. Okay. So, um, Clint Marshall Notepad Knuckles. The feud with Mike Del Cano begins. You retain your championship the first time you guys wrestle. He walks away with the title. Yep. Takes it away. Yep. Um, uh, behind the scenes, I remember specifically, Del Cano say Clint Marshall's title reign was boring and he's trying to convince DJ and Chris Zeppelin to put the belt on him. Um, does did you Were you privy to any of that? Did no. you know that he said that you, your title reign was boring? No. And even if I did know, I wouldn't have really... I don't you, think d- I, you wouldn't I, have cared? I, I honestly wouldn't have cared. Would well, you have agreed? Would I, would I have agreed? Well, I did, you know I what? did agree. Like, it's, it's not even really yeah. your fault if it's boring well, it's whoever's booking is not giving you well, anything to sink and, your teeth into and, he, and even then like when when they said oh you're losing the title to del Carno, i said okay like I, I i never i never once in my wrestling career and i still haven't to this day have never argued to get about what the result is because essentially it just creates unnecessary drama because at the end of the day it's just a backyard fed it's just a bunch of blokes you just want to wrestle and that's yeah it. like I don't care whether how I, refreshing is that yeah <laughs> I don't know I, I you know, like I said I just had bigger things on my mind to occupy my drama with or like my my energy um, and having a whether I had a piece of cardboard around my waist or not was like not <laughs> just like not up there not not one of the things it's that just, was yeah. constantly on your mind so you like, wake up I, I never oh, I God. never I never heard of Barrett saying you know I think his title reign's boring even if he did if even if I did hear that I, I, I honestly don't think I would have really cared I would have just said okay well what do you want to do about it well why don't we why don't you lose the title to me in like controversial fashion I, I would have been like yes yeah, sweet cool like I was always very I would have always suggested something if I thought something was wrong, but if at the end of the day that was the decision, it's like, okay. Okay. Well, from there, um, I, mm, I think it's Halloween Hell. I think it is. Uh, either that or Season Speedings, I can't remember. You dropped the belt to Del Cano, yeah. and um, the uh, radical movement is formed. That was the um, uh, Iron Man match, wasn't no, it? No, not yet. No? no, the Iron Man match was when Chris Eplin joined the fold. Um, so ba- was Barrett already checked? Barrett... Barrett had lost you in the first match, yep. and then the rematch was the following show where the radical movement was formed. Um, okay, did I lose the title? At that, that you lost the title when the rad- radical movement was formed. Right. Um, you and I then there, there maybe was not man, many memories of it. No, I, I mean, I re- I re- well, there was a rematch the next show because he had taken the title. That yeah, no. So I, I remember the f- I remember we had a match and I won that match. He ran away with the title. Yeah, and then. The next show was that the Iron Man match. No, that was so that the, was the Twisted Metal the following year. So following we built up oh, to you getting wow, another title Jesus. shot. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So that match. So Barrett won the title. Won that the title because because of uh, body spray helping him out, and then oh. they formed the Radical Movement. Yeah. Okay. And then Radical Movement was still there the following year in that Iron Man yeah, match. Yeah. And it, still because it, it was I think Twisted Metal was only like April. Or something. Yeah. So from like seasons beatings, I think when Del Cano won the title, it was only about three or four months ah, okay. when when the Iron Man match. So I was I was challenger coming into that match. Yes. Oh, I okay. You learn something new every day. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Barra and I had awesome matches. We've always had really good chemistry together. We just sort of get each other. We know what we're capable of because of that history we've had wrestling on the tramp, and. Um, and, and all of that so like whenever we put in the match we, we knew what we could do we always suggest cool moves I think like we, we hit like a elevator or yeah. like um, 
uh, we we do those like sunset flip power bombs, and, yeah. and, and we 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 just we just knew our capabilities. We could call it while we were there, and we just knew knew the places on our body to like post off or where to hold on to because we were so familiar with it, and that's why our, our matches worked and it's why they flowed. I've just never um, known two guys that seem to just work so well yeah. together like that. Like I can't even make a comparison. Uh, with someone that I've worked with heaps. I, yeah. I could make it a comparison with me and Mykonos when we had that one match. It seemed to just work, mm-hmm. just like you and Barrett do. Um, but you guys had several matches, whereas me and Mitch have only ever had one. And, and one thing I, I will say is that every match was very different. I think yeah. I think every match still um, managed to keep the crowd entertained, which was it's really cool. I mean, when you, when you see... Um, guys have you know two or three matches in a row you're thinking at one point oh, what are they going to do uh, yeah, what and, can they do that can yeah and I, I think we still managed to you know keep it relatively fresh yep. and entertaining which was cool um, there is a there is a point where there's a gauntlet match with uh, you yep. against JD Flame and Mykonos yeah, I remember uh, that. Mykonos gets the win with the super kick yep. um, after I will I will yeah. delve into this situation just after Chris Eppelin joins but um, I watched that match today. It's one yeah. of the only full matches of the whole feud that's actually on the internet. Um, so, uh, how do you think that the feud was was coming together? You think that things um, were going? With, you know, you you're by yourself pretty much. They're doing things with Dan Zeppelin and Tim Justice in the background, but yeah. you're not really involved in that. Um, this is late. What year is this? Where's the time? This frame? is. Uh, 2000 and early 2000 two- late 2011 early 2012 okay yeah because i took icws off for year 12 just straight up i just said guys got exams sorry like um I'm, I, I just can't wrestle anymore um just because of my commitments to my studies at the time um so coming into this, I think my departure was pretty sudden. I think I like I lost the title in the Iron Man match. I it came was, back. Um, I had was the Gauntlet match after the the Gauntlet match was. I'm pretty sure it was before the Iron Man match, which was at Twisted Metal. So let's just talk about that Iron Man match. Let's yeah. just stick stick to that one there. Yeah, thirty minute Iron Man match. I was a referee. Yeah, so I had the best um, that seat in the that house. match was awesome. That was. Uh, uh, you took your like, best. I, I don't really remember much of the feud again because I wasn't really that involved. It was sort of just like rock up, what you know, hit the moves, storyline sorts itself out, or even if it doesn't sort itself out, who cares? Let's put on a show for everyone. Um, that match was awesome. Um, I was surprised that we went for half an hour because you think it's you think it's like oh half an hour. It's not that long. It's hard. It's like, a long time. Wh- it's man. a long time. In wrestling, and um, just to cut you off, two thousand and four, me and Diffuser had a half an hour Iron Man match. So yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> um, it it was tricky. Um, but Dan Zeppelin, I think, was timing, or maybe it might have been Eli. Someone was timing really well. Um, we told them to always let us know at yeah. five minute intervals so we could keep track of it. And I think specifically um, Barrett asked me to be a referee because yeah. he knew that I would like make sure because we had a lot me. of referee spots towards yeah. the end and stuff. But like that match was awesome. I think. I think the final pin count was like three all. I think that. Was I think it was two all. Two all. I think it was because well, it was I know, one all. I know Barrett, but there was I a pin know, and a submission at the same time. I know because what happened is the angle we went for is is Barrett locks in the clover leaf early, and I just tap straight away so that it doesn't impact me. Yeah. And then I hit the scissor kick straight away, so it's like, all right, I've given up the pinfall, but bam, I've hit you with you the move. One. I'm back on the got one. Yeah. yeah. And so then. He pinned, uh, yeah, there was like a uh, pinfall submission, something yeah. like that, so it went 2-1 Del Cano, and then I hit the supernova later on in the match, um, uh, and that made it 2 all. and then I think... I think I got end, knocked out yeah, at some point. and he was and tapping to his own submission, yeah. and that's, you know, that's And then it went to overtime, overtime, and then here we go, Chris Eppelin comes I remember out, one thing he it, takes over as yeah. referee. Uh, one thing I will say about that match is um, I hit the backflip off the ladder spot, which was pretty cool, because how do you practice that? Yeah, especially because I, I remember you three caught me really well. Um, uh, they, you know, they've just caught me, and I'm, I've just gone up the side. And I'm like, oh well, fuck it, I'm already here. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I could, I could do a backflip. I knew how to do a backflip, but when you're doing a backflip onto a group onto of a guys, group of people, yeah. and you don't know if they're going to catch you, it sort of like really hits you. But again, I was sort of just like, well, I'm here now, just do it. You know. 
the worst I think that'll happen is sort of I'll hit someone in the head with my <laughs> knee or yeah. I'll land awkwardly, but yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break my neck. I don't think I'm gonna break a bone. So I just sort of went out there and, and, and did it. And I think in that match as well, or it might have been one of our earlier ones with Barrett, I just did a backflip on the base. Just a moon standing yeah, moon song. Yeah, I remember that too. Yeah. Uh, and then Barrett like comes up. He's like, "Oh, this is how you do one." Oh, okay. do one I like think that was the Omen match. I think yeah? it was. Yeah. Could have been. Could've um, been. So that, yeah, Chris, that, that was a great match. Chris Eppel and Yep. Um, joins Radical Movement. That's a pretty good moment for them. Um, but one thing I, I, I don't know. Just looking back throughout the feud, you obviously you, you probably don't care. But I felt Clint Marshall, the character, gets totally shafted the whole time. You lose to Del Cano, you lose to Del Cano again, you lose to J.D. Flame and Mykonos in a gauntlet match. Yeah. And then after that, Clint Marshall never really got his revenge on any of them, yeah. and that was it. Do you feel like the character Clint Marshall got kind of shafted in that <sighs> feud and didn't get what maybe a baby face who's under so much surmountable odds doesn't get his... Yeah. Comeback? I mean, Did if you want to... I guess it didn't bother you. Yeah, like I said, it never really bothered me because at the end of the day, it was just backyard wrestling. Well, that's a shame because yeah. I want it to bother you so this yeah. podcast is more interesting. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I would be like, fuck Chris Zeppelin, yeah. fuck Del Khan and fuck J.D. Flynn. Yeah, no, that's the one thing. Like, everyone really, like, loves the drama and the bitching and the <laughs> gossiping and I was always just, like, really... Um, <laughs> And I think, like, that's why this is, I think this is, that's why I wanted to do this, is because people were wondering, it's like, why why didn't he kick up a fuss? Yeah. Why didn't he care? Was it because he hated us? Did he not enjoy being there? And I was just like, no, I just, I was just, I just enjoyed getting slammed and slamming people, and at the end of the day, I didn't care whether my foot was on the opponent or my shoulders were to the ground, you know, it was, yeah. it, it was just a show to entertain people, and, um... But yeah, no, it was. I guess you could say it was pretty upsetting that when you think about it. I mean, you still in the back of your imagination, you always imagine like the scenario. Like I always used to like thinking about ICWs as if like if we had that high production quality. Like imagine if our storylines had the production quality of the WWE and yeah. stuff. Like you know, we had all these in the weekly shows. Imagine what we could build it up to. And, yeah, you know, I always thought like, oh, you know, and I finally get my revenge, you know, to come back with that, yeah. with that spot, and you know, yeah, like I said, I mean, partly it's my fault because I think I left very soon after that. There wasn't too much um, that happened afterward, no. Yeah, and I think that's that's why you know it sort of fizzled away and there was no real, you know, comeback and stuff. But it it, it never really bothered me. Okay. Um, but it would have been cool. But again, other circumstances which, you know, took my priority list. Okay. Um, so uh, after this, um, pretty much Mykonos leaves Radical Movement. Following show beats Del Cano for the heavyweight title. I don't think you're there for that show. No, but I um, for a in early 2013, we had a little thing called um, ICWS In Your Yard. It's like uh, they were doing it TV could've... tapings. You wrestled Mykonos I, in a one-on-one -on -one match. I couldn't have wrestled Mykonos in early 2013. No, this was before you had gone away. Before I had gone away? Um, yeah. You wrestled... You left in February. You, could have done you, yeah. you wrestled several matches just before you left. I, yeah, because I would have finished exams. It might have been December, it might have been January. Yeah. We, did, we did this thing called In Your Yard. And I don't know if it was In Your Yard or maybe Yossi Anarchy or something like that, but you wrestled Mykonos for the ICWS title. Yep. Um match that wasn't actually supposed to happen. You and Del Cano were supposed to wrestle on a three way with Jack Wallace and I convinced DJ, no, we never seen Clint Marshall and Mykonos one on one. We have to see this match. Mykonos doesn't even have an opponent today. Yeah. You know, put them together. So Um Honest to God remember? don't have much of a recollection of that. Like again at the time, um just coming out of exams and trying to sort get myself organized for six months of travel I, you know, I had a lot of other things on my mind i think it was one of those things where again i just rocked up on the day and then you just put in the spot the yeah obviously mykonos won the match yeah because <laughs> i never won the title back <laughs> um yeah just uh off uh from vague memory it was fine working with with um mitch he 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 knew his stuff um easygoing guy you know i i never uh, with all the guys at the wrestling, I, I got along with everyone, but I never really became, f like, really friendly with everyone. Um, part, uh, again, a lot of it's my fault because I just wasn't 
that involved in the whole booking side of things. And I think a lot of people um, hung out outside of of ICWS um, in friendship circles, and I just I, I just wasn't involved in that, um, which would explain you know why I never really got to know a lot of the guys that well. Um, but yeah, from what I remember, working with Mitch was was fine. He he was a cool guy. He was laid back. Um, yeah. You know, he knew his spots. He 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 knew how to put on a show. He knew like, you know how to structure a match and stuff. Yeah. And you yeah, know, it was it was fun. Yeah, it was fine. All right, and um, well, your last match in ICWS yeah. is against me. Yep. I think um, the previous two shows, I've been calling you out, saying you know, yeah, uh, this is a dream match that no one has seen. Yeah. I want to do it. You and, were more. Uh, you were really desperate. To I, I kept on messing you. We got to do it, man. Yeah, Cause I, you, cause I was. Cons- I remember because I was under the impression that at this point you weren't ever going to wrestle again. Yeah. Once you had left, because uh, I think you wrestled to, uh, you did the Royal Rumble for us in WCWA, then yep. you did the match with Mitch and Del Cano in yep. January. And That's I right. was under the impression after that you were gone and yep. you weren't going to wrestle again. So yep. I was like, well, shit, I've got to get this in there. Please, yep. please, can we do this match? Yep. And I got you to do it. Yep. Um, but... Um, yeah, Clay Marshall versus Aston Crude. Do you have any memories? Yeah, uh, and I, I, I specifically remember being so hungover. That's that what day. I remember. <laughs> and you said to me, "Dude, you were so keen on this match," and I'm like, "I know," because you just rocked up. I was you, a mess. You, dude. Were, you rocked up, and you you were like half asleep, like could barely open one <laughs> eye. You were a wreck, man. You were as pale as a ghost. I don't even, I don't even think you had changed clothes from the night before. I don't know. I don't yeah. remember that much. Um, but. but you look like a mess. Um, and but like I wasn't fast, like whatever. But like I think we we put on a cool show. Um, my impression of you um, here was like, oh, you're like a big guy. Like you're you're an you're like you're an adult. Like you know, I I always thought like when I'm wrestling you, I'm like, oh, I'm wrestling an adult. Now, so like this is going to be like interesting. Um, I think there are a couple spots where I like properly like lifted you up and hit. Yeah. The I mean, I hit the supernova. Yeah. Um, like he caught but, me on the crossbody off yeah, the ladder and stuff. Yeah. Like, so like we had some cool we had some cool stuff in there. Um, and and I and I was glad we got to have that match. Yeah. I mean, there's. There's a lot of guys who I haven't had a, um, matches with, probably because I've had like seven matches with Del Cano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's complaining? <laughs> like, um, but yeah, no, that was that was a fun match. I think considering um, there was no planning going into it and that you were hungover, I think we put on a pretty good, pr- yeah, pretty well, good effort. Yeah, it was cool. It was kind of and, organic. And, and I think you, yeah, the sort of angle you'd gone at it. Because at, at the end of the match, you like. You shook my hand or something. I yeah. think. I think after the match, he's like, "He's the real deal." Like, no yeah, doubt yeah, about yeah. it, and stuff like that. So, like, that was cool. Yeah, like, I think. I think that's. I mean, because you were always in the back of your head, you like, you really wanted to like push me. You looked at me fondly, and it's like, "Oh, this guy's a good bloke." Like, you know, good yeah. wrestler. We should push him. So, like, you wanted to like really cement that. I guess it was kind of like I'm passing the torch, yeah. but at the same time, I'm passing the torch to the guy who's out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I've but, got um, your torch now. I'm it was kind of like, I think we both, we didn't even really speak of it, but the match was a uh, game of one-upsmanship. Yeah. You did the fisherman suplex, then I did the fisherman suplex. Yeah. You did a fall-away slam, I did a fall-away <coughs> slam. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we implemented yeah. all that stuff, and I think it was a pretty decent match, but, you know, yep. I, want, I want one more. Like, yeah. At some point, someday. After the match, you probably don't remember, Killock Chaos beats the shit out of you. Don't remember. Um, well, after the match, I go backstage, you are you know, you're on the base oh, celebrating, Chaos what did, comes out. What did he attack me with? I can't remember. Oh. But he beat the crap out of you, left you laying in the ring, and, you know, that was supposed to, when you got back from, um, I Israel. think you went to Israel. Yep. When you got back, if you were going to be in ICWS, you'd come back for him. Yep. Um, and actually, I've been using that as something in my feud with Chaos right now in ICWS. You you ended Mykonos' career, you ended Clint Marshall's career, you ended Brian Lowe's career, <laughs> you're not going to end mine, blah, yeah. blah, blah. He's had the title now for like fucking you know, three <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Clint Marshall, that's your ICWS career. Yeah, it was it was fun. Like, that's the underlying theme, I guess, is I was never that serious about it. There, there are a handful of guys, which, like, no disrespect to you, like, no, like, no hate, but, like, there are a handful of guys who, like, were really passionate about it. Like, they wore their heart on their sleeves when they came to that arena. And, like, your wrestling was what they did, you know what I mean? It was, like, their... It was their 
football, it was their soccer, yeah. it was their, you know, competitive sport on the weekend. So, yeah. like, for them, it was their time to shine, for their, you know, for them to, you know, really show who they were and stuff. And, th- and that's great. But for me, it was never really that. I was never trying to prove anything to anyone. I was never trying to, like, work my way up this, like, political hierarchy <laughs> in the business. Like, I was just there, you know, turn up, wrestle with the guys. Um, and for me, it was a great change of scene as well because, I mean, um, coming from uh, a small school where there's only 40 kids in your year and you don't have a sister school or anything where yeah. it's just your school yeah. um, and you're seeing the same people all the time, it, it, it's, it's really good to sort of get out of that bubble and, and, and interact with um, n- and new people. And it was really refreshing. And again, a lot of great memories in ICWS and I, I you know it was it was really great fun you know going there with the pizza and eating and yeah. drinking and yeah I, I I had a really good time and I enjoyed it and there's no hard feelings with anyone I don't think I ever had a blue with anyone there. Well, I don't recall um, that either I don't think I've ever had a blue with anyone ever in wrestling just because I can remember no. yeah just because I've, I've always sort of stepped back and um you know let it let it happen not you know invested my energy and anger and into things that are worthwhile yeah or that that you know where it's going to make a difference okay but yeah no so it was it was it was really good in icws and i guess you know it's the sort of start you know and i i, I was i i felt really respected there i didn't feel like i'd like earned any of it, it was, i felt like a lot of it was just like bestowed upon me and at times, I guess I did feel guilty that, you know, it's like, oh, I haven't really done much, guys. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I really appreciate it, but like, you know, hey, I haven't been here that long. But like, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that the guys took kindly and especially since I came in and I was the last one of the group, I was <laughs> the one who like held so much pride. <laughs> yeah. It's ironic, like I was the one who held so much pride and stuff and then I came here and I'm like, not really that fussed about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Considering how like some people were hell bent on success. Yeah. Whereas you were just like, eh, if it happens, it happens. Oh, it happens. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> that I, <laughs> that seems to be the um, repeating motif mm-hmm. in the uh, saga. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed ICWS. Um, would I ever come back today? It's like I see. Obviously, it's the same with WZWA. It's it's sort of a matter of, of time, commitments, and priorities. If I was never, if I wasn't doing anything, if I had nothing on my weekend which was of high priority, then yeah, hundred percent. Why not? I still like. I still like. I, I still enjoy wrestling. Like that's the thing. I, at no point did I have I ever said like, oh, I'm not enjoying this anymore, or I'm embarrassed, or I don't like it, or whatever. Like for me, it's always been like, sorry guys this is going on or you know this is yeah. happening and, and we'll get to the nitty yeah. gritty of that with the next uh, yeah, section absolutely. Uh, but thank you not a for problem doing part one here with Clint Marshall his uh, ICW I'll be back he will be back and thank you for listening to the GBYW in Australia podcast we'll be with you for part two very very soon thank you for listening <laughs>